Hello and welcome to the Famous Musicians Podcast. This is episode 37, which I have decided to entitle, which will help me because I'm improvising all of this, How to Budget Your Time as a Freelance Musician and Find Yourself Again. Um, so I think today's a good example of uh, budgeting, having to budget my time. Immediately after this, I'm uh, going to hop on a bike and uh, bike to an adjacent town in Long Island to do some late night organ practicing. Um, and today, the only real break I had was from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I gave myself a two hour lunch break to uh, to just decompress. And I finished a, a novel, Christian, a Christian uh, science fantasy novel. Um, so, here are some things that I recommend. You can uh, imp- implement them or or not. Um, I hope I hope they help. So there's a there's a program uh, called Google Keep. It's a great uh, list and note taking uh, technology that I that I love to use. Um, I can keep it on all my devices. I personally have a clamshell phone, um, and as you, I mentioned in the other episode, I don't use Facebook or Instagram, but on the computers that I have, the ones I'm using for audio production and stuff like that I have, I can load up Google Keep on any of them, um, and it's very helpful, um, and at that I try to use in, in conjunction with uh, a book that I read uh, called Getting Things Done by David Allen, and uh, the, the crux of that book was basically uh, your your to-do list, what you're writing for the day, day-to-day stuff, is insufficient. And there's stuff that's always going to be in the back of your head that you're like, oh, I should take care of that. You'll feel like you're never going to really address it as long as you're um, only limiting yourself to day-to-day tasks. That there's this, like, basically this whole, like, um, underground realm of subconscious stuff that you just, some long form stuff that you're just never going to accomplish because you're only thinking about day to day, basically, if that makes any sense. So what he sort of recommends is, um, you sort of have a note taking thing, you know, for me frequently, it's going to be my cell phone or a little book or even the back of a shopping receipt, uh, from, from the pharmacy. Uh, I'll have a pen out, and, you know, if I'm from by a tree or from by a, a little parking stick thing for a parking space, I'll just, if a thought pops into my head, like call this person or remember to do that or, you know, whatever. I have to call a guy about plastering this patching up us, patching up my downstairs. I've been procrastinating that for like six or seven days. It's terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, you write it down. And then what happens is, you decide what list to put it on. Uh, and so you can say, oh, this is on my six month plan or this is whatever. And so you, and basically you make this like complex series of lists uh, where you can sort of take things from there and put it in your take care of it right now list. Um, and I think that that feels more complicated than just writing a, a, a to do list. But I think it's ultimately more satisfactory for someone such as myself because I, I'm constantly bothered by thoughts, you know, in the back of my periphery trying to remind me, oh, yeah, you're supposed to do that. Uh, there's a fantastic violinist, uh, professional violinist that I've, I've in, in, a, in a fantastic cellist, and I've, I've, I know the two of them, and I know that I've always wanted to play. There's two groups I wanted to play the, uh, uh, the Ravel piano trio with. One that just folded because that just didn't work out for one reason or another. But the other group... Um, as it turns out, the first group was volunteers. They weren't asking for money. The second group, they were all professional. Um, so they, that would probably would work. The only problem was I have to bankroll it. But again, I'm thinking of that. I, re- I remember like, oh, yeah, I've said I've wanted to do that for like five, six years. I haven't done anything about it. David Allen, getting things done. Got to get things done. Um, so just, just some more ideas here. So, um, you know, you look at conductors and you go, conductors, what's the difference, right? Like, you learn how to conduct, and that's that, right? Like, you know, you, you either know how to conduct really well or you don't conduct so well. 
you know, well, what, what, what is there some hierarchy? I think there is. And I think e- even in a perfectly equal world where everyone conducts equally well and has a good, good rapport with people, faculty and students or people in your choir, um, the difference between a novice and an expert choir director is that an expert choir director plans up to a year ahead. And the novice one is collecting a paycheck and he's doing it from week to week. And he's he's getting the choir together a half hour before the service or the concert. And he's like, uh, come on, let's scrape this together. The expert guy has already gone through all of that in his head. He's mentally prepared for it. He's mentally prepared his choir for it. And the 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 concert is the result of the worst possible outcome. <laughs> done in the most musical way that he's just sort of he he's already crashed the car he made sure that he would crash the car on the second rehearsal the novice avoids that sticks to his strengths and then he crashes the car at the concert so just some just some food for thought um finding yourself um you know when uh Bach got to the end of any piece he was writing, J.S. Bach. He apparently wrote, he says, solely, solely Deo Gloria. If, you know, solely for the glory of God. Um, you know, maybe you're not religious. Maybe, maybe you don't believe in God. Maybe you're agnostic, you know. So maybe that's not something that really, that really helps you, that, that you find that resonates with you. But, <clears throat> but you have to find out what your motivation is. And this is especially hard, um, as as a freelance professional because you're you go to school and you learn all these skills and there's almost zero application for them unless you have a corresponding entrepreneurial um vision and ability and uh it it gets be there's a lot of drudgery and it's very easy to just drop everything that you learned and and saved and tried so hard to do and just do something else um but you know it and if you don't have a a motivation if you don't have a carrot on the end of the stick if you don't know why you're doing this you will do that you're going to drop everything and you're going to start do something else okay and now here's the thing okay if you found that this really wasn't for you and you did something else that's one thing and that's i'm happy for you i think it's a beautiful thing but if the point, the reason you did that was because you you didn't take a couple moments to, to reassess why you got into this game, as an opera singer, as a vocal coach, as a singer songwriter, as a rapper, as an organist, as a concert pianist. You know, if you could have done that and it would have kept you in the game, maybe maybe you should have done that. You know. Um, and it's it just gets so hard again with the with the last episode where I was talking about Facebook and Instagram because because <clears throat> what ends up happening a lot of the time is that stupid like button is you you're just you're all, you're only going to feel motivated to record a piece and put it up somewhere unless a whole bunch of people see it and like it and swath you in praise. But is that really why you're doing it? Are you doing it so people pat you on the back? I'm not saying that's a bad thing. You know, it's free. Every, every everyone, I can't do that. I I have to do it for another reason other than that. You know, I have to be more self motivated than that. Um, here's here's a personal anecdote for you. Um, when I was a a small child, my father worshipped the ground I walked on. I mean, he still he, he did it up until the day he died. But, um, but you know, like I would sit down and I'd play the piano, and he would uh, he, he would just think it was the greatest thing, and uh, once I think I was eleven years old, I sat down at the Baldwin Upright at the Hamilton the Hamilton Baldwin Upright, and I sat down. And I started practicing, and my father got a call from someone Ken Star Ken Blue whatever the hell you know somebody another organist or something like that, and he picked up the phone, and he um he didn't say anything, he didn't applaud, he didn't give me any look of approval that he thought the the sonata that I was practicing was good. He didn't give me anything. And he was always doing that a little bit subconsciously being like, oh, Joe, great job, great job, good job. And that one day when I was 11, he didn't do it. And I remember I just broke down in tears, you know, because that was why I was doing it. I was doing it for my father's approval. 
Now, um, when I realized that about myself, I stepped back and I analyzed. And I was like, oh, wait, I'm already really good at this. I do want to do this. And if my dad doesn't give me approval, it's not going to make me stop doing this. Um, and for me personally, I'm happy that I'm still able to do that and, and find ways to challenge myself artistically in all the various pursuits and hustles that I have. Um, but I, but as what I'm saying is, you know, you really got to take, take a moment to really analyze why you're doing what you're doing, you know, um, because you're going to have some rough days ahead of you, all right? When you're doing gig work, you're doing a lot of per diem stuff, and maybe maybe you never get a salary. Maybe you never get a salary. Um, but you need to have the conviction, you know, the conviction that what you're doing is 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 what you want to do. And if you don't have that conviction, don't do it. This has been episode 37 of the Famous Musicians Podcast. I hope what I some of what I said was helpful to you. Um, have a great have a great rest of your week. I'm out. <laughs>